Well, it was part one of Movie Night on Love Island, USA. Gotta say, don't know if it was uh, my favorite thing. I felt like they... So far, I think the next episode, maybe they'll, with part two of Movie Night, they'll give more shit to the guys. But I felt like the clips we saw in Night 1 of Movie Night weren't the clips I would have liked to see. However, I am glad we got the Kendall exposed party clip of him being his messy self of, you know, how he's been really gung-ho about the guys in Casa Amor moving on to new girls, even though he's supposed to be such good friends with the girls, the original girls, and now he's trying to play uh, be these good friends to the Casa girls, and he just wants to be friends with everyone. And I've seen a lot of people say that Kendall's just playing the game so hard. And while I do think Kendall's playing the game, specifically with how much he was cheering on the guys at Costa more while he was staying faithful, I don't think all of Kendall's thing is him playing the game. To me, and it was proven in the game earlier this season, but to me, Kendall is this majorly insecure people pleaser. This is why he has this constant need to be friends with everyone. And we, I think in Monday night's episode it was, when he was really up in Serena's face. This was after she basically was cussing him out. And he was trying to get her to forgive him. But very pushy about it. And that's kind of been his style. So yes, well I do feel that Kendall is playing the game. I don't think he's playing it as hardcore as a lot of people think. And I do find him annoying. And I did say it in the last video that I don't think he deserves to win. I'm rooting for him the least, although Aaron and Kayla make it hard. Like, they're just, it's the same thing over and over now, these last three episodes where they make up fight, make up fight. And it's not entertaining because Kayla's always crying or trying to cry or just whining. And Aaron, you know, I'm giving a lot of shit to, to Kayla for all the crying. But Aaron is a sociopath or something. He, or he just can't take responsibility for his own actions or all the above. Because the over-talking of Kayla, the not apologizing to her. He's someone always trying to save his own ass. And I think that's catching up to him, thankfully. But before I digress off of Kendall, well, let's just say that he is 100% playing the game and it's not just his people-pleasing tendencies. And I do believe, like I said, that at Casa, him being so gung-ho about the boys moving on was him playing the game. He still does not deserve to win the game for playing the game this way. People say, oh, he would be good at Survivor, he would be good at Big Brother. As I said in the last video, no, because he does so much yapping, all of his yapping would catch up to him. Even before movie night, it was starting to catch up with him. But more importantly, the way he is playing this game is all wrong for this show. Because there is no jury. Those are the four words I said in my last video that I could use to destroy any case that Kendall should win just for playing the game and playing it well. I don't think he's playing it well. He's playing it as if there is a jury and all of these other players in the game are going to vote for a winner in the end and he's just friends with everyone. In the end, America votes for a winner. And as we continue to see for the past week now, if not more, like a good five to seven episodes straight, Kendall's edit is that he is messy and quite unlikable. And so if you need America's vote, the way he's been going around doing all of this, I don't think he's going to get America's vote. Or at least I should say, I don't think he deserves America's vote. So Kendall to me has definitely become one of, if not the most unlikable people this season. And I hope he and Nicole do not win. Also coming out of movie night was a lot more of the Kendall, Serena, Dea situation. Serena continues to figure out her feelings and her feelings are what they are. And I think as I've stated several times over my last few videos, she has a right 
to fill the way that she is filling. Dea, as much as she has been twisting words, I did feel like in Tuesday night's episode, she did kind of tell the truth in my opinion, that if she wanted to go further with Cordell, they probably could have gone further because he did not have any boundaries at Casa like he said he would with Serena. But as much as I didn't think it would be possible, I am kind of enjoying the way that they are recoupling. Like I said before Casa in one of these videos, they were becoming my favorite couple. They did kind of become my favorite couple because I do feel like they have great chemistry. They have since episode one being dressed the same. The producers knew what they were doing when they casted both of them on the show. And they do mesh together very well. Very entertaining. They make each other laugh. Even some moments these past two episodes where there's been a lot of pain, they've been able to make each other at least chuckle a little bit. We'll see what direction that continues to move into, especially after movie night part two. Kenny and Janae continue to be close again, which I am kind of enjoying. As I've stated before, I have a hard time figuring out Kenny. A lot of people on Twitter just say that he's slow, and I can see that. He does come off a little slow, like a himbo, as some would say. I, I can see that. And I stated in my last video that I have a hard time understanding how Janae thinks that she can read him so well, because to me, he's very hard to read. But I think the key to them in this relationship is maybe their eye contact. Kenny gives her a lot of good eye contact. And as a lover of eye contact myself, I understand how that can form quite the bond, quite the connection. And I've seen on Twitter some video and some stills of the first time they met when Kenny came into the villa as a bombshell with two other people. And he and Janae were in an eye lock. Even after Janae was going to meet Nigel, they kind of kept a little few more seconds of eye contact with each other. So I think it's just the eye contact that is really driving the those two together. They seem to enjoy each other's eye contact, and I completely understand that. I've been there before. Of course, there was drama again between Leah and Liv. One of the reasons that movie night part one kind of annoyed me as I feel like production just loves Rob a little too much. I continue to understand that he drove a lot of the, the early seasons drama and that's probably why they want to keep him around in hopes that he will continue to do so. But they could have showed a little more of Rob being a villain instead of continuing to try and play Leah as this big villain and play Leah and Liv against each other, which is not hard to do, I suppose, because Leah has been a villain at times of season two. And I know her stands will probably disagree because she can do no wrong, but she has. And I will continue to be team, team Liv over team Leah, no matter how many stands um, Leah might have. This is a no stand zone on this channel to anybody that's ever seen my Big Brother coverage, the standing of some of the worst individuals, I will completely go against it. But I do like Leah, let's be clear. However, if it comes down to Leah versus Liv, I'm gonna take Liv's side. Because the stands can go and say that uh, Liv shouldn't have said that Leah was the driving force behind Andrea going home, but on the other side of the coin, Leah was trying to say that she took a backseat to that vote, and she did not. So, you know, you could say both are in the wrong, I guess, when it all comes down to it. But Leah's yelling and the shut the hell up at, at people all the time. It's like, grow up a little, why don't you? That was most of the episode. I don't have as much to talk about tonight. I'll try and come back again maybe Friday night, hopefully. There's a Thursday episode and a Friday episode. I completely skipped the, the hideaway with Kendall and Nicole. Not just because I don't like Kendall, but like, did anybody truly want to watch the hideaway between those two? I mean, hideaways in general to me are kind of awkward, but especially with those two, I 
Maybe it's my complete distaste for Kendall, but watching those two as a couple lately is not doing anything for me. Kendall truly does just come across like a 28-year-old frat boy, and it's just not vibing for me. And once again, I don't think those two should win. Last thing I want to touch upon was I loved that Serena, of course, Serena, who has become my favorite, calling out Aaron when Aaron was trying to stick up for Rob so hard once again when it came to the argument between Leah and Rob and it coming out about the, the shit that Leah was talking about. Rob, that he gave her the ick at one point. I'm glad Serena called out Aaron for going so hard for Rob and, and Rob's crying when Kayla's been crying because of Aaron for days on end. I'm glad somebody called Aaron out on his shit there. And of course it was Serena. And last thing I want to say... People were giving Miguel a lot of shit for, I guess, the way that he and Kendall may have talked about Serena's reaction to Cordell and how it was over the top. Although Kendall did a lot more of that shit talking, of course, than Miguel did. But people continue to try and catch Miguel on some shit. And Miguel's the straight, the most straight shooter of the guys. I mean, most of the girls are straight shooters. Of the guys, Miguel's kind of the only straight shooter. When Leah was going off, popping off once again, telling people to shut up, Miguel said in the confessional that he didn't like that. So Miguel stays true constantly. Miguel is very consistent. And it is why I like him. It's not just because he's a Pisces. That is why I like him. <laughs> but he's repping Pisces well. So, I mean, as well as a... As a hoe can rep us, I suppose.